Hello, Ender Sword here again with another replay, uh, this time from the Gold League. This replay was posted by our Protoss player, Ploto, uh, just on the TeamLiquid.net forums, uh, the strategy forum there. He was looking for help in this matchup, so uh, we're doing this video just to uh, point out a couple of the areas that he can improve on and really get a much better result out of this matchup. It is, of course, a uh, PVT. His opponent will be the Terran player Moon down here in the bottom left-hand corner. We are on Taldarim Altar, uh, one of the biggest maps out there. I believe the biggest on the ladder at the moment. And the size of that will come into play on a few of the engagements. The three key points that we're going to look at during this game are constant pro production. Uh, so really taking advantage economically over your opponent and taking advantage of any expansions that you have. We're going to be looking at uh, point number two, supply blocking yourself at very key times during the game. Supply blocking yourself is always bad anyway, but there are times that are more impactful than others, so how to be aware of those key timings and make sure that you don't uh, fall into that. And number three will be uh, engagement. Um, how to engage in a proper way and not... Uh, not just throw your army away, uh, as we will see during this game. Uh, not really intensive micro stuff, but uh, just how to take better care of your army uh, when approaching your opponent. So we saw there uh, the probe come in, didn't get a lot of information, saw two marines, uh, didn't happen to see whether or not uh, there were gas taken yet, really only saw the one barracks, so he's uh, playing a little bit in the blind. He has opted uh, for a one gateway opening here, skipping the first zealot and instead going for a stalker. He uh, tries to pick uh, this SCV off, kind of turning around to go get it. He was going to uh, poke to the front of the Terran base. There is a timing there where Protoss can often feel blind that they're blocked out of the Terran base. By putting a stalker up uh, in front, you can take pokes at the front and actually see what's going on in terms of at least what the Terran has built um, at its front and then get the stalker away. You can do that before concussive shells are done so you're not going to get caught. You can always escape uh, away from Marines with a stalker. Just poke, maybe pick one off and, and so on. The uh, Terran probe actually got in and basically saw everything that was going on in the Protoss space. Didn't see these two gateways, but did see the early robotics facility, one gateway, the two gas were taken, and so on. So he is pretty well informed at this point. Here's where we get into the issue of uh, supply blocking yourself at key times. This robo facility is ready to produce an immortal, but it can't because we're supply blocked. These two gateways are just finishing, and the warp gate tech is just finishing. So all this production is coming online right at the same time, but there wasn't a pylon there able to deal with it. So this whole thing is very, very delayed. If the Terran had responded to this early scouting information of one gate and one robo, and decided to make a push at that time, this really puts you at a huge disadvantage. On top of that, due to a follow-up supply block, no probes were being made at the Nexus. Uh, we've got two of these not on cooldown. Um, they just haven't been being used to their full potential, and you can't be doing that uh, this early in the game. You have to avoid those supply blocks, particularly when all your timing is focused on this, and everything comes online at the same time. If it's come online, you have to start using it or else you're in a uh, pretty big disadvantage going forward. He is opting to go for an expansion here. I wouldn't call this uh, really fast or anything. That's a pretty normal time, particularly on this map, to be getting a, an expansion out. Um, and we'll see how that kind of puts him ahead. We've got the observer down here uh, taking a peek around. He was blind for some period of time there, so to just start getting information around 8.20 is a bit late. If the Terran had something really scary going on, it would have been uh, a little late to find out about it because you can't really react. He is a bit lucky in this case. Uh, he's gone for tanks and a bio force, 
So the immortals that are out actually do uh, respond fairly well to this. But looking back home again, as this push moves out, we are uh, we were temporary supply block there again. Nothing producing out of the robo, uh, and just now getting uh, warped in a few more things, but still nothing. You've got this robo here, which is the key linchpin in your technology, but nothing is coming out of it uh, with these tanks uh, coming up the map. The positioning of this army is way back. Um, often you want to stop the Terran from really getting those sieges up so that you can pick off some of the bio before the sieges are there. This engagement does come in, and it's not really responded to very well. Half the army is left behind. The Guardian Shield is a bit slow going down. No force fields were uh, placed to block the bio army from moving back. And... Uh, we do ultimately have the tanks being picked off here, looking pretty even now, the Terran having more damage done to them. But as the numbers dwindle, the Medivac really comes into play, and it's hard to out DPS the healing done by the Medivac. And a lot of that was due to having a bit of a straggler force over here that wasn't uh, coming into battle at the right time. He was just leading with the wrong units, not getting the proper force fields down, not cutting that army, and uh, not really restraining it at all. Just a pretty bad overall engagement uh, for the Protoss there. It ends up uh, taking an engagement that looked like it was going a lot in his favor and losing more resources by the end of it. We do get a switch over to Colossus technology, and for the time being, uh, our probe count is pretty decent. Uh, there is a 8 probe advantage over the Terran army. Of course, the Terran uh, does have mules, which pretty much accounts for about four more um, SCVs per base that he has. So that is a bit of a compensating factor, but we're looking okay here as Protoss have an extra base up, and uh, everything looks hunky-dory at this point. He's got enough of an economy to make up for uh, that missing... Uh, uh, missing resources that he kind of lost in, in a bad engagement there. Adding on a few more gateways here, but we see again we're approaching a situation where uh, you may become supply blocked once all this stuff comes online. One pylon is being built, but one pylon can't actually account for all this production. And there we are again, a class is not having time to come out. Uh, as the pylon finishes, it starts, but now these ones are here all on cooldown, uh, or not on cooldown, and again, no no room to actually produce until the pylons come online. So try and line everything up for when you're making a big addition to your production like that. They've got to be able to produce immediately on the other side uh, so that you can actually get the benefit of that. He's just now switching to the uh, idea of adding two or three pylons at a time to try and stay ahead of that, because uh, you can see he's, again, pushing it close as we're going along there. Uh, no range being started yet for the Colossus. It is okay to get two or three of those out before beginning that, um, but instead opting to go for charge uh, at this time instead of the, uh, the range uh, addition. Against Terran in particular, the range is uh, fairly important, so you do tend to want to get that started at least um, after about two Colossi are out. Particularly this late in the game, it wasn't exactly a rush to Colossus or anything, so having the short range ones aren't as useful at all. Uh, now here we get into engagement and basically how to not engage. This is textbook of how to not engage an army. He's just kind of move commanding everything down, um, realizes this, and letting everything walk at its own speed. Coming single file into the Terran army, getting absolutely destroyed by these tanks. The force fields that go down don't do anything to cut off uh, the army in any way. Instead, just kind of trapping them on the bottom of the ramp, but not isolating or pushing anything back. So he really is just engaging everything at the same time there. You just had a stream of things coming down. You want to keep uh, your army not only in a tighter ball, so it's just not single file walking across the map, but you also need to keep 
uh, units in the order that they're meant to engage. A lot of people joke about the Protoss having um, kind of an A-move army. It's just not true, though. You actually have to micro it a lot, um, particularly just before your engagement, because left to itself, the Stalkers will run ahead. Your Sentries and Zealots will be way behind. Your Colossus will be out of position because... If you just move them, they start walking over cliffs and everything like that. So you do actually have to arrange your army before an engagement uh, in particular, or else you're just going to lose out there a lot. Uh, it also, the timing of that attack didn't make a ton of sense. He was researching charge, but ended up launching his attack about 10 to 20 seconds before it was finished. So if you're going to invest in that attack, at least get it before making that big hit, or else why did you, you get it? Um, back on the home front, uh, back to pro production, we've kind of stopped uh, that pro production, and now the Terran side, which got its expansion a lot later, is on 47 workers versus 43 probes, and is throwing down mules on top of it. So the Terran economy is a lot better uh, than the Protoss one at the moment, and he is opting to get up another command center, having cleared out the rocks. The Protoss is not yet thinking about a third, and it really should have been done for both sides a long time ago. Um, but instead, he is moving out here. Again, we get this single file stream of things coming down, and the two armies do kind of pass in the night here. Um, despite seeing each other, the reaction time to turn around here is very slow. Um, and just not coordinate very well. Again, we see the Colossus does its own little thing because it doesn't have to follow a normal path. The army ends up engaging in this horrible position. The Zealots get caught in back, have to run around their own forces, so the charge is all very ineffective. Um, the, all the major DPS units are picked off immediately, leaving the Zealots up there to just die uh, at the end of it when they should have been the ones in front taking the damage. So it's not a super intensive micro thing to do, but just make sure that your army is in a large goal pattern and just regroup yourself before you're launching into one of these large engagements. Don't just move in there single file and end up with your units rearranging themselves and walking in uh, without really anything... Um, without doing anything and just dying before they ever get to the front line. Uh, so we see the Terran kind of responding to that, coming through crushing. The protest army probably could have killed this uh, if it had engaged properly. There was a lot of damage potential in the charge slots. There's only one tank left there. The healing certainly uh, by the medevacs is a bit of a big deal and the Colossus would have been taken out by the Vikings regardless, but with a few Immortals mixed in, a lot of charge lots, and proper use of uh, sentries and force fields, as well as guardian shield, he probably could have won that engagement. So to just recap again what uh, went wrong in this game, he did allow himself to get behind in probes despite jumping out to an early advantage. If you take that lead, uh, you want to keep that lead. You always need to be ahead of the Terran economically, uh, again, because of their mules and their ability to just explode behind that. Supply blocking, you got to watch that at key times. He's missed entire rounds of production here at key times that could have completely changed the game. And engagements, do not engage single file, regroup your forces and attack in a logical way, and you'll get a lot more out of it. Thanks for watching.